One of the most common things that I see in working with other therapists and healing professionals is a neglect of what makes them joyful, playful, and embodying their innocence again. And that word innocence, I understand, comes with some strings sometimes. We've been conditioned to see it as being connected to something that got taken from us. Maybe um, it could be connected to feeling like you're naive. Um, innocence can also be associated with childlike, um, not in a good way, but you know, not wise. And I suppose I want to encourage you to see the word innocence as something to reclaim. It's something that we all have, but because of conditioning, because of trauma, it has been covered up at times. So it's easy to forget what real innocence is. And one of the things I see most commonly disregarded or forgotten in helping professionals is their own innocence. Another word or another way to say that would be a forgetfulness of how to play, how to be in their bodies, how to be a child again, how to authentically connect with their bodies, their intuition and them and each other. And I know that sounds kind of weird. Maybe that's just a byproduct of being an adult, but there is something about specifically the therapy profession and also just helpers and healers in general is we're so good at giving and giving and giving that we forget that we are also a plant that needs watering. And we literally, that's why we burn out. So why do we do this? What's up with that? Why do we forget ourselves so quickly? Where well, I have not seen that be the case in a variety of other professions. It's just not. We are very easily um, self-sacrificing. So I would like to invite you, if you're a therapist or helping professional that's listening to this, how have you recently invested in yourself, not another training, not um, something that will help your clients, but how have you invested in what brings you joy? Do you know what brings you joy? It's okay if you don't, most people don't. No one's asked that question to you maybe in a very, very long time. When I started um, doing singing lessons and vocal improv and dance movement improv, um, which is also called contact improv, these are some ways that I found that actually brought me joy. I was like so excited about them and still am. And there are things that I literally are air for me. I cannot let them go or I will shrivel up and get burnt out again. So sometimes it takes a little while to feel into what that is. And I want to let you know that the pinnacle outcome of going through the Yothera method is to find that again. And it's not only to find that again, it is to be seen in it. And it's also to integrate it into your life with obviously with yourself, but in a community, in a safe container where you can share and be seen in your joy again, in your innocence again. So I really want to invite you to do some self inquiry around this. So if you're feeling burnt out and you're feeling like, I really want to go this direction with my work, or I really want to be more intuitive and I really want to be more embodied, but I don't really know where to start. This is where. This is where to start is first find your joy. Don't take another training. Don't go get more, you know, education credits around this other thing over here. No, do something that makes you excited and joyful and playful and like a child again. That is my tip for you today. So if you want to join us, of course, I'm going to invite you to the Yothera Method Embody Your Innocence Hot Springs Retreat. It's in Idaho and it's at Trinity Hot Springs. All the details are in the link in the bio. And uh, we start October 4th with some online support. And then the actual capstone in-person retreat is November 10th through the 13th. Would love to connect with you. Would love to share the Yothera Method with you and witness you in your new story of innocence. Let me know if you have any questions.